Have you ever had a rendering that just didn't look quite right? When you were done, you couldn't really figure out why? The majority of the time, the issue is the quality of the assets that you're using inside of your rendering. Let's talk about a way to get better results from our renderings using better assets. What's up guys? Justin here from TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and V-Ray tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to check out a library of assets that you can use inside of SketchUp in order to get better results when you're rendering with V-Ray. And they're available to V-Ray users for free. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so if you've ever tried to use 3D warehouse assets in order to get more realistic renderings inside of SketchUp, you know how it can be a bit of a challenge. So this chair, for example, um, this chair is fine if you're gonna create a 3D model and just show it in SketchUp. However, if you were to render this, it wouldn't look very good. The reason it wouldn't look very good is because it doesn't have textures on the top with actual maps set up, so it doesn't have the real data that you need in order to create a realistic rendered image. So in addition, it's got kind of lower, um, it's got materials that aren't mapped on here properly, as well as lower resolution materials that aren't gonna look good when they're rendered. And so another example is if we look at some of the bed models, inside of SketchUp. So let's say we were to pick this one right here and let's just take a look at it real quick. So again, if we were to look at this, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this model. I'm not saying it's a bad model. I'm saying when it comes to the geometry and the textures that are applied to this and other things like that, it's just not gonna render out very well inside of SketchUp. You've got tiling in here from the way the geometry was created. There's not actual materials applied to this with maps, it's just colors. So if you were to render this, the light wouldn't interact with it very well. So what we need in order to render more realistic things inside of SketchUp is we need models that are actually set up for rendering. And so if you use V-Ray, Chaos Cosmos is probably where you wanna go. And so the reason that you wanna use Chaos Cosmos is A, it's available for free if you have a V-Ray license. So what that means is that means you just have to open it up and you can access it inside of SketchUp. And so in addition, what it has is it has a library of multiple different kinds of models and other things that you can quickly bring into SketchUp. So if we were to look at this library, this library has things like furniture and accessories and vegetation, as well as things like materials, which come with material maps that are gonna be more realistic, as well as HDRI images that you can bring in to use as a background as well. So. What does that mean? That means that you can go into the materials section and let's say you needed to import like an asphalt or concrete material. Well, you could just look up asphalt and it's got multiple different asphalt materials set up to be imported into your models. The nice thing about things that are inside of the Chaos Cosmos library is they are actually built to help you render more realistically. So let's take a look at how this works inside of SketchUp. And so this is a simple studio model that I've worked with in the past. Um, I can link to the video below where we created this. But let's say that we wanted to bring a Chaos, Co Chaos Cosmos model into this scene. What we would do is we would jump into the Chaos Cosmos window right here. And we could click on this. Well, when we click on this, usually what it's gonna do is it's gonna take you to the home page right here. So there's a home dropdown right here where you can select the different kinds of things that you look at, or you can also use the options on the home page in order to access these. Notice how you can access both online and downloaded based on these options. So I can click on the downloaded option in order to access everything that I've already downloaded inside of Chaos Cosmos. So if you just wanna see your local stuff, then you can use the downloaded option. But let's take a look at some of the stuff that's contained in here. So first off, let's look at some of the furniture and other models that are contained in here. So if we click in here, notice how there's currently 152 assets that you can import into SketchUp. And so when we import these, and let's go ahead and let's import this chair right here that I've already downloaded. But when you import these, if I click on this, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna jump you over into SketchUp and you can click in order to place this model right here. So now, let's say that I wanted to rotate this. I could just rotate it like any other geometry. And first off, let's take a look at this because what this is doing is this is bringing this in as a V-Ray proxy file. So what that means is that means that this model actually has high resolution textures, different maps applied to it, and very detailed um, geometry inside of it as well. But none of that is being brought into SketchUp. Within SketchUp, 
what they've done is they've brought this in with like a lightweight proxy file that shows you exactly where the chair is going to be so that you can move it around, but it's not slowing down SketchUp by having all that extra detail in here that you don't need for SketchUp itself. And so if we jump over into V-Ray and take a look at what this did when it rendered this, you can see how this renders out with the fabric in here very realistically. You can see how these materials all have the proper maps applied to them. And so when they have the proper maps applied to them, what that means is that means that light comes off of these in a very realistic way. So you've got this whole library of models in here that are set up to give you a really realistic rendering. So if we look at this, um, it's more of an overall view. This is an excellent renderable model that you can look at inside of SketchUp. So there's also a library of 45 different 3D vehicles. So ranging from SUVs um, through more like sports cars to bigger trucks. And there's even a boat in here um, as well as a helicopter. So a fair number of vehicles in here. One thing I do want to point to is there is an option in here for didn't find what you were looking for. So you can actually click and type what kind of assets you need if there's something that isn't in the library. And again, when you bring those models in, so if we look at this, it brings in this low poly proxy file, but within V-Ray itself, it's actually rendering out um, with those uh, material maps already set up. It's giving you a really realistic look for your vehicles. So if you need some quick vehicles to add to your scenes, this is a great place to look at those. So these are also set up so you can start combining them. So let's say, for example, that I was to bring this coffee table model down. So we're going to import this coffee table model like this. Then we can also go in to like the accessories. So if we go into accessories right here, or maybe let's, so if we go into our accessories like this, you can add different things that go like on the table. So let's say for example, that I wanted to bring in this picture model down, I can download this. And so you can see that these combine together really well. So if I was to do an interactive render on this, so you can see how you can quickly put these things together in order to get a realistic result. So not only can you add things like furniture, but you can also add the accessories that go on top of the furniture in order to make your scenes look more realistic. And so in addition, you can also edit the materials in these objects. So let's go ahead and let's zoom in a little bit on this object. But let's say that we wanted a different fabric material on here. So what we're gonna do is first off, we're gonna jump into Chaos Cosmos and we're going to download a fabric material. So I'm just going to jump into the materials and I've actually already downloaded this. So we'll just take a look at it. So um, I've downloaded both this gray fabric material as well as this pattern fabric material. So I was to click on the button right here to import this. What that's going to do is that's going to import that material into your asset editor. So notice how your fabric pattern and your fabric gray are now showing up in this list right here. Well, what we want to do is we want to adjust this chair file so that that fabric material is applied to it. And so you can do that by jumping into your geometry section and you want to find your office chair right here. And notice how there's an option down here for merge. If you click on the merge, what that's going to do is that's going to convert this to a proxy mesh. Um, notice that the LOD versions, which we'll talk about a little bit later, will be lost if we do that. So you do need to do that if you're going to customize this though. So we're going to click on the button to merge and what that does is converts this to a proxy file. We've talked about proxies in the past. And so what we can do is you can see under this materials drop down right here, this is listing the materials in the model. Well, we're just going to jump this over to our fabric gray material. So notice how when we swap this to our fabric gray material, this gets rendered out as that gray fabric. And then you can jump back into your materials editor um, under fabric gray, and we wanna go down to the UV. And you can adjust the UVs so that this is a smaller on the surface. So I'm gonna just bring this down to like 1.5, for example. We'll notice how then this material gets smaller, but you can swap out materials on these files really easily. So let's say that I wanted to change that fabric gray to the fabric pattern. So we'll go with this one right here. And again, notice how it's a little bit big. So we're just gonna jump back and adjust our UV on this. And so we're just gonna jump back and we're gonna adjust our UV. And we'll go up to one and a half again. And notice how this gets applied on our object. We could even bring this one up to a two probably and still have it look good. But 
Notice how you can swap out materials inside of these models with no problems whatsoever. And so there's also a really great library of 3D vegetation, so things like trees and bushes and other things like that. These are highly detailed models, um, and a lot of them come from like XFrog. And you can see how they're larger files, but they render out really realistically. So there's kind of a close up of them in here. And you can see the mesh that's contained in here as well. You would import those the same way that you would import the furniture that we've already looked at. And then to import materials, so let's say, for example, that we wanted to model out a floor. So let's get rid of this chair and we'll just model a floor right here. And so let's say we wanted to apply a wood material to this. Well, we would just go into the Chaos Cosmos browser and under materials, we would find like a wood material. So let's say, for example, that we wanted uh, maybe this one right here, which I've already downloaded. Um, and what we would do is we'd click on the button for import right here. Well, when you import this, then that's going to show up in your V-Ray asset browser over here under materials. So if we look at this, we can see how our wood tiles material has been brought into our model. So we can preview it right here. Then we could also apply it like any other V-Ray material. So if we were to click on apply to selection, for example, notice how that's getting applied to this surface. And the nice thing about this is if you look at these, and we can kind of rotate around so you can see what it creates. But these contain the diffuse maps and the reflection maps that are going to make this more realistic, as well as the bump maps. So, or in this case, a normal map. Um, those have all been applied to these objects, allowing us to have these really realistic materials without having to do a whole lot of setup. They're already set up. So you can use this in order to quickly download materials for V-Ray. So in addition, Note that these models support proxy um, LODs, meaning that when you get close to an object, um, the full geometry is going to sh be shown. But when you move away from the object, and we're in a V-Ray vision right now, but when you move away from the object, then a less detailed version is going to be loaded um, in order to improve performance. You can toggle that on and off by checking the enable proxy LOD. But notice how if I was to move forward, for example, to right here, Notice how more detail loads in when I get close to this object than when I move away. So you can use this in order to improve your performance by not rendering as much detail on the objects that are further away from your camera. And then once you have your model set up the way that you want it to be set up, you can share it by going to extensions, V-Ray, pack project. And so notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna save this as a packed scene file. Well, then you can save that. It's gonna ask if we wanna pack all of the asset files with the project, and we're gonna say yes. And what that means is that means that it's gonna put everything you need to view this scene on another computer with V-Ray into this package. So I'm gonna click on the answer for yes, and then you'll get a notice that says the project was successfully packed. That's gonna pack all the files that you need into a zip file. And if you were to extract that and then look inside of it, and so that's gonna pack all of your different textures, your maps, your meshes, everything into a file that you can then reopen in another version of SketchUp. So then you can take all of those files and just bring them into a new version like this in order to create a new rendering on a new computer. So this is a great way to share everything that you need for the Chaos Cosmos files really quickly. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the Chaos Cosmos files. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.